Okay, guys, welcome back. So this is going to be today in this demo. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, adding some finishing touches to your image. Okay, and some of those touches might be, for example, considering we talked about in the last demo about adding foreground elements to create depth and spatial relationship inside your piece. So if you come over here and look, you can see where my horizon line is, and you can see how I added some foreground elements in here. I have sort of this rocky little area um, and I added these rocks in the front here um, and then what I wanted to also talk about today too is when you zoom into your image taking care of any little blends that need to be resolved you can see here I have some blue still on that photo from when I put it in I tend to save that for sort of the very end because as I'm working I might you know um, delete something or replace it a little bit later so I like to sort of do this last little bit of what I call retouching Okay, someone asked me the other day too, say, Phil, I have this, this, the horizon line in there from when you had control R from the rulers up, right? How do I get rid of it? That's really easy. Um, if you come down under view, it's called your extras, which is control H. If you hit control H, they're gone. Control R takes away the rulers. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I, I showed a little bit of this yesterday about how to make a nice little tone variant or to drop something in the foreground in shadow. Um, and what I also wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys uh, an option of how you could look at your, your colored piece in tone really quickly. And that's something that I use quite often. A lot of you artists use it in Photoshop to distinguish any tonal variations. And I could already tell you by looking at my piece here, I have a couple little problem areas that I want to address. Okay, One area is right in here where the rocks in the foreground are almost the same value as these rocks down here. So what I need to do is I'm going to have light coming down. I'm going to have a little bit of a shadow in here. I'm going to need to come in and select some of this rock here, and then I'm going to have to, you know, lighten it up a little bit so these uh, pop, uh, drop back, I should say, and then the foreground becomes darker because it's closer to me, an atmospheric perspective, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to address too, uh, a nice little finishing touch, is I'm going to come over here and you see this, if I take my color picker right now, you see the yellow that's in that cloud right here? Um, a nice little tip I actually learned in oil painting is when you take a look at the color of the sky, if you ever go out plein air painting, or you're just taking your traditional oils or watercolor and you go out and you paint sunsets and environments, the sky, the colors of the cloud tend to be their water opacity that's reflecting the sunlight which indicates the highlight colors, okay? So something I like to do at the very end here is I like to swab that color right there and I'll cover this in a couple minutes and then I take that color and I put it on a separate layer and I create some highlights that I could then come over and place highlights on different parts of my building structure that I built that match the clouds. Therefore, our little computer in our brain sees that, hey, the background environment is matching up to the structure environment, and it all feels relative. It's fitting in the same environment. My goal as a digital artist is to give you a photo or an image that looks real, even though I constructed it. I've constructed this image so far from, I don't know, multiple, multiple photos, okay, and copying and pasting, but I want that to look real, so if I get hired to create a piece of concept art on a movie or if they want something that's photorealistic, I have that ability to come up with something like this that looks realistic, okay? So first thing I want to talk about here is I want to talk about, and I think I covered this a little bit in the last lecture, but I'll cover it again. How do I create some variance in color um, in here if I want to make this go a little bit darker? Now I could come in here, my foreground overlay right now is a separate layer. And if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could go to color balance and put a little bit more blue in there. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong layer. Foreground, there we go, color balance. And if I put a little bit more blue and I hit the shadows, you, the problem is, is it puts blue in the whole entire piece, okay? But a really cool technique that's really fast that allows me to control my shadow variations is, is that I could just select this whole foreground element. So look at the whole foreground. See how it's just one piece right there? from multiple photos that I've combined in there. I'm going to just select this right now, copy and paste it, or just duplicate it, right click on the layer, duplicate it. Okay, I've made an exact copy of it. Now what I can do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to suck all the color out of it and make it completely black or white. So if I come over here and watch, if I do control, um, go to levels, 
and if I go like this, now it's all black. And the reason why I did that is it's easy for me to select. And then what I can do is I can stroke that as a gradient to blue. And then I can put it on multiply and create dark shadows and gradients where I want them to be. So now that I have that selected, I'm going to say control all to select. And then I'm going to hit V and then one of the arrow buttons. And if you, I don't know if you see it, but it just selected around all the interior line right there. That's one way to select it. Or if you wanted to, you know, you could take the magic wand and you could just come over here. Oops. If I hit deselect, hit the wand and select it, it's going to select it the same way. Just out of habit, I just say command all V and then hit an arrow and it automatically does it just the way that I've been doing it. Now that I have all this selected, what I can do is I can come over and I can put a gradient of blue across it. Question? It's, uh, you know what, it's not selected. So that's probably one of the reasons why I like to go command all V, hit my arrow, and now everything's selected. You're right, I happen to miss that little area. Thank you for pointing that out. So now that I have it selected, what I can do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select, you know, just some type of a, a, a dark blue for like a shadow. I'm going to go from a value about right here, let's say, and, and then I'm going to select this bottom color and I'm going to go down to another blue and go to this sort of dark, sort of navy blue in here okay so now I have a color range there and what I can do is some of you if you go under the paint bucket tool underneath that is the gradient tool so then I could come over to the gradient and I could stroke a gradient going across like that but what I need to determine the thing about gradients that's important is when you look at images in natural life in life there are gradients that happen of going from dark to light so um, when I come back and if I turn this off real quick and I look at what I have here I'm going to have light coming from uh, the upper right hand corner down onto my structure, right? So this area right here might be a little bit darker and then light might be hitting right about here where I get a little bit more highlights or some reflective light popping off. Some of that will come in practice and time of you paying attention to how light works. And if you go out, that's what's great about plein air painting or going outside with your sketchbook is looking how light casts shadows. How does light affect trees? Uh, Monet and Manet used to do these color studies where they would go out and they would look at how light affected at different times of the day. Okay, they would look at how, uh, I think it's Manet that did the wheat fields with the giant wheat roll. He would paint the same location in the morning, afternoon, and in the evening to look at how light was affecting that particular location. Okay, so what I want to show you real quick is this sort of this process of subtraction, okay, where I've put blue up on top here. Okay, and so what I can do right now, if I deselect, I have this blue layer. Actually, let me command Z. I want the dark area to be over here. Actually, let's try it like this and see how it comes out. Um, I'm going to come up here under my layer selection. Right now, this blue is a solid opaque color. But if I come over and I drop this down and put it on the multiply, okay, it's now sort of see-through. Now, multiply might not work the way that I want, but I have soft light. I have hard light. I have some other settings that I can do in there. Um, I particularly don't like to mess with these as much. I like to use the opacity setting. The reason why is that when I use one of these layer settings here and then I go to merge it, it changes the way the layer works. The layer then re re excuse me, resorts back to its normal setting and it doesn't keep the same function that it had. However, if I adjust it by opacity and blend it in like this and blend it over the top of my structure a little bit, and then I could come in and erase some parts on it. So let me zoom in. Let me get rid of that ugly white background. That's really hard to see with all that background. But there, you can see the blue now that's on here. What I can do is I could come in and erase pockets of this to have sort of a blue shadow. And that blue shadow will create a sort of a richness of shadow detail on my piece. So let me show you how I would do that right now. I've dropped this opacity down to about 30%. And I put it about right here at about 25%. About 20%. I'm going to come in, hit deselect now. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I can come in here with my eraser. Okay. And I'm going to go down to like 10% by hitting one. And I could come in here and I could say, okay, light's coming this way. So I might have a darker shadow here and I might have more light up here on this corner. So what I can do is I can start to erase a little bit. I'm erasing some of that blue that's coming off of right here. Okay, so that way the natural color is shining underneath and then right down here I get a little bit more of a blue shadow. Now, I have a little bit of a, of a weird tint to this. It's a little violet 
for me, so I might come under hue and saturation really quick, and I'm going to adjust the saturation of this a little bit, okay, and then pull it back a little bit more to about there. Actually, that's not bad. I sort of like that right there. And I actually noticed I must have hit a hotkey. I accidentally filled a whole entire layer right here. So let me Command-Z a couple steps. I don't know where that happened. Sometimes I'm working and I'm too busy talking in this recorder, this microphone. Yeah, something happened there. Do you see that? It filled the whole entire layer and I didn't want that. So let me go back and fix that real quick. So let me duplicate this again real fast here. Okay, let me go over to Levels. Let me turn that into just a solid color. Okay, select all V, select that particular area, and now I'm going to come in back in with my gradient here. Okay, um, actually, uh, you can use the gradient depending on the sunlight that you have, and if you want as well, you can also fill it with one local color. This time, I'm going to try to just fill it. I'm going to use this darker color, so I'm going to hit. Uh, I have the area selected to fill it. I can either go to the bucket and tap on it, or I can hit edit and go to fill. And what it's going to do is and I'm going to type in foreground color here. It fills it completely there. Now I can come back in here and I could drop the opacity down. And you see how I create that sort of shadow effect in there? Let me turn it off and on. See, it darkens it quite a bit. So let me put this at about, say, about right here. Now I could come in here and I can erase the parts that I don't want. So I want light to be hitting a little bit of this corner. So if I put my eraser to about 20% in here, I could come in and I could start to erase. And they're really subtle differences. You might not notice them right away, but it's just sort of going through and working through the piece. And these little subtle differences start to add up, okay? Let me zoom in again here. So hold on a second. My window's floating. Let me get it back in here. I'll drop it on the top. There, now I can float through my picture. So let's say right in here I want, I'm going to erase a little bit off of this. So my eraser is at, I'm going to raise it up to about 20. See, I get a little bit more of that rock color to come through. And then I have that shadow casting underneath here. So maybe down here I can come back and I can erase a little bit of that blue off of here. Do you see how I'm doing that? Just really subtle sort of changes. This is going to help prop some of my foreground elements and make them on a separate layer because I'm adjusting the shadow variation on them. Okay? There. So I just do these light adjustments. Sometimes they're just really subtle. Just get a little bit of that rock, get a little bit of that shadow off there, blend that in a little bit, erase a little bit off of there. I'm going to come over here. I Here, I'm going to erase a little bit off of here and get a little bit of that highlight to blend in. Same thing right in here. I like to work at sort of a lower preset where I can adjust some of this just going really soft with the brush. I keep it at, you know, anywhere between 5 to like 15%. Same thing in here. Light's going to be coming across. I might have some light that's going to start to reflect off of here. So I might want shadows that are darker in the back there. So I'm just going to erase a little bit off here. Just a secret to good rendering and digital painting is being able to have a good example and sample of just gradation variations. Everything that you look at that's hit by a light source has gradients inside it where there are little pockets going from dark to light. There are little milk and crannies and texture variations on the surface that go dark to light. So by coming in and doing this, I'm allowing myself to create some of these dark and light um, areas. Even on the top of the stones here, look, I can erase a little bit off the top. So any top surface that's going to be hit by light, I'm erasing a little bit more off, sort of working my way through the piece. And that's going to really pull the foreground together. Okay. Um, there's an illustrator that used to do this. Maxfield Parrish, one of the great American illustrators, actually used to work in a four-color process like this to build color on his paint. I mean, on his uh, when he would paint his illustrations, he would actually do like a CYMK process where he'd put down four different colors and then he would erase each color. And when you blend colors on top of each other like that, that's how you create full color. So you would know exactly how much, you know, um, C versus Y or M or K to subtract to get a certain color to pop forward. So, you know, if you have yellow and magenta, right? So yellow and a red, you're going to create an orange, and that would pop forward. Versus if you erase the yellow and took a little bit more of the blue and the red together, 
you're going to create you know a different variation of color and so he used to do that in the side as illustrations which is a similar technique to what i'm so, sort of doing here i'm just trying to be able to come in and add a little bit more of a blue to some of my shadows there we go just erase a little bit sorry keeps doing that every time i go to paint sort of pull it down a little I like how this sort of works together back over here. I need to darken that back side right there later. like so. So let me just zoom out of that real quick and take a look at it. What I've been messing with, look at the difference. It just puts a little bit of a blue tint on there and I still want to lighten that up a little bit. Just like that. It just adds a little bit more to the shadows, pulling this a little bit in the foreground. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to comment on. Try to separate your foreground to midground to background and that's a real simple technique that you can do. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is go into your photos and if you notice little areas that need retouching, like look at here, I have that blue right there. This is how easy it is. You just select the main layer that you'd use. Let me turn my touch off. Okay, if I go into my lasso real quick, I like the free form lasso tool right here, where I could just draw. I could just come on top of this real quick, select this area, and this is all in one layer, and I just select around it like that, and I come in, this is where the stamp tool is really handy, is you come in and just stamp a little part right here, and you come down here, and then I'm just gonna stamp right over that. And see it selected, deselect, that's it. See that blue's gone now. So I have to come back in little areas of my photo. Look, I have a little bit of blue there that doesn't look right. So I need to come in here, I need to select some of that. Now that would be a good example of where I could just do content aware. So if I come back down under edit and I go to fill and I go into content aware and hit OK, it's just sort of blended that together for me. So I need to find these little areas. You guys are going to have all types of little areas in your photo that might have little discrepancies. You need to fix those because what happens when I go to print, you're going to see these pop out and they're going to uh, be sort of like the sore, the eyesore of the project and they need to be fixed. So here I have quite a bit of, of a blue area. So I'm going to select all of this. And again, same thing. I come in here with the stamp tool. I'm going to select right above it. I'm just going to come in here and just sort of edge some of that off. Come right in here, let's put some of that in there. Okay, do the same thing back in here. You have to get your edges nice and crisp and clean to make things look good. So I just deselected there. I still have one or two spots I missed. I have this little edge in here. I'm going to have that edge. And then when I come back over here, I have this little corner right there. I'm going to select that and let me add this to it right here. Just drop it down a little bit lower. Oops, hit the wrong. Too busy talking. There we go. I'm going to select that little area there. There we go. And I'm going to stamp it again. Just cover that little bit there. I needed to get this little edge in here. And I can make my brush a little smaller too. It's actually pretty big. There we go. That's it. So that little area is done. Look, I have this little area here that doesn't quite look right. I need to adjust this in here. So I'm going to come in here. That's it. Select. Remember, too, if you sometimes when I'm working, I just use, I prefer to use to hide the ants. If you want to do that, you can do that as well. Just don't be surprised. It, it makes it a little harder sometimes if you're trying to stamp and you want to see. No, I missed that. I missed a little area here because I couldn't pick my hand off my monitor. There we go. Let's try that again. Oops. Sorry, guys. I'm not paying attention. I'm looking at my Cintiq and I'm not looking at my keyboard. There we go. Let me add a little bit more right in here as well. Add that guy in. Okay, 
now same thing here. Stamp. Get that to blend. Come over there. We have a huge area of blue right here that just needs to be gone. Okay, now here I'm on this edge. I'm going to see if I can stamp a little bit of that right there and just get that to blend in there a teeny bit. And then um, this end part here, since it's the sky, I can just select this here and come back and delete it like that. Okay, so there. And if I zoom out of that, you can see it fits a lot better. And I still have, look, I have a little bit of blue coloration in there, which was from the photo somehow. So what I can do to get rid of that is I'm going to put another layer up on top. I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to take some of that darker value that's right there. And I'm just going to come in at like 10% and just sort of paint over a little bit of that blue and try to get it, create these little pockets of dark and light and get rid of that, that blueness in there that's there. And you just do that by swabbing around on your colors. That's pretty good. Also, I can select... Don't forget to, um, remember on your stamp tool, you have that setting, right? To adjust it, 30, 40%, you can adjust the overall opacity of the brush and the power at which it's painting. That's a huge benefit for retouching. Let me zoom out, see exactly what's... Come on, stamp. Sorry, my touches. I really don't like this Cintiq touch here. It drives me nuts. I'm going to sort of fix this a little bit here. Okay. All right. And I have this little spot in here. I'm going to adjust this. Okay, that's it. So that's what I like to do. I just zoom in and I go find those little areas. I sort of zoom out and look like I can see blue around here. So I want to go in there and fix that. But you guys get the point. So that's sort of the second phase of cleaning up part of your photos. I already got most of the blue out of here, and that's looking pretty good. Um, and then I still have just this area in here. I have a couple little spots here and there. And you want to get those out because when you go to print, it can make a huge adjustment. Okay. So the next part of today's demo that I wanted to do outside of the foreground, touching up the photos. Um, gosh, I even look in here, and I must have done this when I merged something together. Look at that blue in there. That's just horrible. I'm going to just select some of this real quick here and just see if I can content aware a bunch of this. Edit, let's try fill, content aware. There it goes. So that, that worked pretty easy. Let me see if I can get this out of here. Edit, fill, content aware. There we go. So content aware is great. It saves me a lot of time. Edit, fill, content aware. Excellent. Okay, cool. So I can make some real quick adjustments using that too. I need to get a hotkey for it. I'm, I have one at home, but not on this machine. All right. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do next, and by the way, I, I never did finish my castle. I, I just need to put a good another five or ten hours into it and make this really cool structure here. I And I... I want to go and draw it and design it and come up with something really cool. So I need to finish the top facade and what's down here. I had the idea of a queen or someone standing out here and like an army marching up or something. But let's talk about the light now. Let's get into that. So let's take a look at, at the light source. If I come over here, I'm going to click on the color picker and I'm going to grab the highlight that's on this right here. Do you see that? And that tells me exactly what that highlight value is right now. It's this really bright uh, yellow right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer above. Okay. 
Now, when I see highlights, highlights never tend to be like one solid color. They tend to be little gradients. So what I can do really quickly, let me show you a really fantastic way to manipulate and put highlights on an object, is come over, select your marquee box, and just do this. Like I'm going to take that little marquee right there. I'm going to, I have the yellow already selected in my color picker, and I'm going to go over, hit G, under the bucket, or above the bucket tool, right there is the gradient tool. I'm going to come over, and I'm going to stroke that highlight like this. Okay. Okay, I can get a little bit more yellow in there, like so. There we go, just like that. Now I have that on a separate layer. Okay, what I can do is I can take that highlight now, and if I come over here and I put that on multiply, see what happens? I can create um, this little, hold on a minute. There we go. Hold on. Uh, v. Why is my computer acting up? I can take part of that highlight and I can move it around and I can manipulate it on part of my objects. Now I don't like what multiply is here. I can come over, see what overlay looks like. I can drop the opacity down on it a little bit and I see I can create this little highlight that I have and I can come over and blend that just by rotating and now I can put that on different parts. So I have that cloud in there. Now I haven't dropped the opacity down or anything yet but it's going from a darker and then it's fading off here, right? So watch. Let me come over here and I can put that sort of right on the top here like that. And if I blend it down a little bit, even a little bit more, and I drop it and just get it ever so faint like that, you see the difference? I have a little bit more yellow of the cloud that's blending into this structure right here. Okay, so let me turn that on and off. Look at that. So a little bit more of the cloud is now being reflected in here, and then I can have a gradual gradient going from this yellow and then fading to this orange down below here. Okay, so watch. I'm going to duplicate all these and I'll come back and I'll clean them up a little bit and adjust them. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put one over on that structure there. Okay, um, I'm going to real quick, I'm going to erase the part that's overlapping right here and delete that out. And I'm going to delete this out right here. Okay, that's there. Then I'm going to delete that part out that's there. And then I'm going to duplicate the first one that I have. Dupe. Okay, and I can bring that little highlight over. I'm going to transform it again. The cool thing about it is it's just a separate layer, and I could transform it and squash it and stretch it. So look, I could actually cover this whole little area right here. Now, remember, look at it. It was going from dark yellow to white there. So um, I need to decide where I want the yellow to be hitting the most. And I actually want it on the top. So I'm going to rotate this like so. Transform it, squash it down real quick, get it about here, transform it again, stretch it out a little bit, and I'm going to bring that right over about right here, condense it down a little, and I can get part of that highlight right up on that tip right there. Do you see that? Right on that edge. And then I could erase anything else that I don't want on there. And since it is a separate layer, I can adjust the opacity now on it. Do you see that? So if I want to get it really to pop out a little bit more yellow in there, it's a separate layer and it's really easy for me to do that. Let's say that that's what I want to keep. I'm going to come over here and just select the leftover that I don't want. Actually, I'm just going to use my eraser tool and just erase it off. Erase off of there so that's in shadow. Put about 50% on my eraser. There we go. Okay. There. So do you see how now, just what I've done really quickly, let me just merge these layers together and commit to them. Now that's the, the key that happens there. When I merged them, it went back to 100%. Um, and I could adjust that a little bit more. Just a second here. Let me get that, blend that in a little bit. Let me just get that blend in and erase some of that off of there. There we go. Okay, so let me just show you what I did. Let me turn this on and off real quick. Look at the difference. Do you see how it's sort of orange right there? And now when I turn this on, do you see how it's picked up some of the light from the clouds now that's coming down on the object? So that's really, really important for me. Now that that's, it's still a separate layer, I can just select this. I can copy and paste that gradient. Look, and I can bring it right down here. Look, I'm going to transform it. I'm going to put it right here on top there. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to erase off. Make sure you're at zero. 100%. I'm going to erase off. Look, I put a little bit more of that light there. Okay. Um, let's say I wanted a little bit brighter 
I can duplicate that layer. Remember the layer effects, right? Now it makes it a little bit stronger. See that? I duplicated that. I copied and pasted. Let me show you what I did so I don't confuse you. I have everything right now on that one layer, okay, which is right down here. And I wanted to be able to copy and paste that highlight and put it down here. So what I did is I selected this area from here to here. I copied and pasted it and I put it down below. But it's a little light. Let's say I want it a little bit brighter. Well, I just duplicate that layer, which I did, and now it's a little bit brighter on top. And let's say that's a little too bright. I can select the layer above, drop the opacity down just a little bit like that, and that's sort of perfect. I get that to blend in really nice. I can merge those two layers together. Now I have a separate light source sitting right there, or a highlight, I should say, not light source. I'm going to duplicate that, and I'm going to move that over to this side right here. I'm going to go to Transform, right-click to Distort. Now, this drives me nuts. I wish they did this like they do in Maya. Do you see how the transformation box around the object doesn't allow me to stick with the major axes of the object? The object is turned, right? So I do this sometimes where I will on purposely hit transform. I will rotate it this way, then hit transform again, because now it allows me to, to rotate it, and then I can grab this and just squeeze it in a teeny bit here. See that? And then if I hit enter, now I have that highlight going right over there. I can erase this little bit right there. So these little subtleties of adding in, manipulating the light, um, th this is what I love about being able to turn lights off and on. Let me duplicate that layer, right? I'm going to bring that up here. I'm going to rotate that upward like so. I'm going to put that right about there. Okay, I'm going to go back to erase, erase a little bit of that overlap. Oops, erase a little too much. There it is. Okay. Then I'm going to duplicate that guy again, bring him over in the front here. Now, technically, as I move closer to the light source, the light's going to get a little hotter. Okay, It's going to get a little bit brighter. I'm getting closer to the light source. So what I can do now, watch. This is a separate layer, right? I'm just going to duplicate that layer and make that a little bit more intense right there because I'm moving closer this way to the right, and that's closer to the light source. So watch. I'm just going to duplicate that layer. Boom. And now it got really bright there. That's fine. I'm going to dull it down just a little bit. Because now what I'm doing technically by darkening this, by excuse, darkening, excuse me, by lightening this and this, I'm creating another gradient where the gradient is as the light comes down and affects this, it's going to be a little bit brighter. And as it, the light casts here, the highlights are going to dull down a little bit. That's a really great approach to work. Again, thinking about light. When you look at light and how it works, it travels in gradients. It hits different parts of an object. And as, it, and as we move away from the key light source, the light tends to break down and, and gets a little bit lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay, And that's what I'm doing by copying all these layers. Look, I'm going to copy this layer underneath here. I'm going to duplicate that guy. And then I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop him down just a little bit more. There. So now it gets a little bit brighter, a little bit less, and then a little bit less as it moves across. Okay. Here I'm going to merge. I have all, look at all those layers I've just created right there. Okay, I'm going to merge all these together. And now let's just take a look at, let's go ahead and commit to them. Let's look at the difference. It's a great thing about Photoshop is being able to see where you were and where you're at now. So there's all the light off. And then look at the difference with the highlights on there. See how that fits it immediately more into the environment? It's because I'm just copying the reflective quality of the light in the clouds and bringing some of that into the piece. And that, just that little adjustment right there, it adds a lot to it and really gets it to blend in a little bit more. Um, I'm, let me come over here and see if I can save some time. I'm going to select what's right here. I'm going to copy and paste that, bring that over, put it on this side. That fits pretty good. Then I just need to move this over. I'm going to select it, hit V, move that over. Let's rotate it, get it in position about there. Boom, it's done. Deselect it, okay. And then I still need to come over. I never did finish this. Let me see if I can just sort of cheat that in a little bit. Commit it all to one layer, merge it. Let me select this light source right in here. Okay, copy, paste. I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to try to save myself some time. So I'm going to transform it here. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. Hit duplicate right there. Okay, now I'm going to merge these two together. So look, it's one layer. You see that? I'm going to transform it, rotate it, and I'm going to try to get this whole entryway right there along this edge right here. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit, like so. Get it into about right here, and now I'm going to erase. 
And to come in here, I'm going to erase that off of there. I'm going to erase where it's overlapping right here, where it's overlapping right in there. And I'm going to thin this down a little bit more. I'll erase where it's hitting here. Okay. And see how that looks like a direct light now gradating upward on that? It's working for me right there, that light that I just put in there quite a bit. So I like that. I'm going to select that. Let's merge that into one. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select this. Copy and paste. Let's move that. I'm going to place that in about right here. I need to shrink it down just a little bit, like so. There we go. I have some more erasing to do to get that in there. Nice. Oops. It's about there. Oops. Try that again. Right there is where I wanted it to erase. And I'm going to erase this off of here. And I'm actually going to just move this. I'm going to take lasso and take this selection and then just move this over a teeny bit here, like so. Okay? Deselect. Um, there I have my light. Now, I, I didn't finish the shadow. I never finished working on here. I'm going to select some of this. Oops, let me zoom in so it's easier to select. Come on. Sorry, the touch is getting all weird again. I'm going to select some of that shadow structure there. There it is. Okay, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that. I'm just going to bring it along here. I never did finish. Transform. Bring that down about there. Make it a little bit thinner. Like that. Okay. And I need to erase a little bit more of the, the light off the top here. So let me blend that in there. Commit to that. I'm going to erase and then erase some of that highlight off there. There. So now I have that little darker shadow along part of that walkway or the entrance way there. Okay? Um, same thing here. Let me go to the straight lasso. I need to fix a little bit of that light here. So I'm just going to select from about right here and sort of go across. There. So there we go. I need to adjust a little bit. I never did finish that top there, which now I'm sort of regretting to getting to into these. There we go. So now I have some light coming up there. It matches the cloud. If I look, I like to keep my highlight separate because when I'm working sometimes, my eyes get used to the painting. And then when I come back with my what I call a fresh set of eyes after I've taken a break, I can come back and look at it and I can make that decision and go, well, what did I do last time when I was working? And then I can look at my highlights and go, Oh, cool, that works really well. That really matches the clouds. It brings part of the piece together. I like that. Now, the highlight that I did, I still have that color selected here, right? So I could still come in and put some other highlights on here. I have highlights that I can put on the front of this building. I have some highlights on this structure right here. And your highlights don't all have to be the gradient method. You can also just take a brush. So let me do that with a brush, OK? Here, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a separate layer. and. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of zoom in here. I'm going to take one of the brushes. I gave you guys all my brushes. Okay. Um, there's a couple in here that I really like. I like this texture fade in. It works pretty good. And then also, I can't pronounce this, this darn brush, but the off geno, I don't even know what the heck it is. I call it the, the, the Schwarzenegger brush because it sounds like a Swiss name, right? If you grab that brush right there, okay, that I really like the way that tends to work. And what I can do is here's another way to paint some highlights in. Highlights hit the corner of objects, right? They reflect off of where two edges. That should be knowledge of basic drawing, right? Watch me come in here really quickly. I'm going to drop my brush down to about 10%. And look, I'm going to hit this top piece right here. And see, I'm going to make that really hot. You see how I'm doing that? I just really put a nice bright highlight on that top section. And then I'm going to come in here, and then I'm going to fade that off. See how I'm doing? And I'm doing that with my brush. Now I'm not using the layer option. 
I'm just lightly, my brush is at 10% and I'm hitting this little hot area and then I'm just going to come down here, put a little another, I'm touching about four or five times in the same spot which is making it about a 50% grade but then I'm lightly fading that light down. You see that? Go from real hot to a little bit medium and then fade it down. Okay, I can do the same thing here on edges. Right here, I'm going to get real hot here with that yellow. Watch that yellow pop out. Bam! There, I got really hot right in there. I'm going to come down on this little edge here. Do the same thing. I'm going to get that to pop a little bit. Get a little bit of that edge right in there to pop out. And then I'm going to lightly blend it in a little bit. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to sort of do a light stroke going across from going from light that way it's a little bit of a gradient from the top here going where the lights hitting and then it's lightly fading okay now here's a light question for you if I have light that's hitting right here on the edge as it fades toward the shadow it's gonna get stronger or lighter okay if light is coming across and it's hitting these edge corners right here and I have this bright yellow as it fades as it goes towards here there's less light hitting between that end and that end. So it's going to get a little bit darker in there. So I'm going to come in here and I can stroke a little bit in there and then I can just lightly, I'm even going to get hit 05 to go to 5%. And I'm lightly going to add a little bit more yellow lightly fading in there. Okay. Um, the one thing I have not put in my piece yet are shadows too. Okay. Um, and to do shadows, it can be as easy as doing this. I could come in here and I could select part of this area here. Hold on, I'll show you shadows in a minute here. Deselect. Hold on, ah, hit the wrong lasso. Sorry, guys. Let's finish the highlights first before I get too, too overboard on this, okay? Let me come in here, brush. I have a corner right there. So I'm going to get my brush nice and small. It's about 10%. And hit a little bit of a highlight there. Now, here's a little secret to you, my little renderers in here, my little illustration majors. Don't over render and go highlight crazy. Too many highlights will ruin it and not make it look right. You have to know where to put them. You tend to put highlights on little creases and edges where they pop. Highlights pop when you have a coarse shadow meeting the intensity and the reflective quality of a bright light source hitting an edge. Okay, so I, I might come over here. I'm going to put a little bit more right, right there on that edge. I'm going to put a little bit on that edge. A little bit down here. And then I'm going to fade it off because... I don't want to have too much. I'm going to get a little bit more in here, paint a little bit there. And by painting that highlight on there too, it's actually bringing this top surface forward and allowing this back surface to fade back. Okay, so all right. Let's take a look at the difference with the highlights on there now. Look, all those highlights there. And then I actually made the mistake. I, was, I actually merged my layer by accident because I was using my hotkeys in there, but that's okay. I have a little bit of yellow. I like the way it's it's working, okay? Um, let's talk about shadows real quick. There's a couple ways you can do shadows, okay? I showed you this once before. One way to do a shadow. First of all, let's create a new layer, label it shadows, okay? Here's one way that you can do a shadow is you can literally come in here with your lasso, go to the main layer, and you can select. Now, if light's coming this way, this surface from here to there is gonna cast a shadow it's going to go along this wall. It's going to look something like this. Okay? Just sort of draw it really quick in here. Like that. So what I could do is just come here under levels. Okay? And I could just darken it immediately like that. And you see how I, Now let me hit control H to hide my ants. Here, let me hit cancel. Control H. There, I hid my ants, my extras. Now if I go to levels, the selection is still there. And see what I can do? That gives me an idea of how my shadow is going to look. Okay, do you see how quick I did that? Just creating a little drop shadow there. Now, the, here's the thing about a shadow you have to think about. Depending upon the light source, shadows change. Shadows have something in them that's called delineation. They delineate which means they have a strength. So think of a sphere. Look at my hand. Think of a sphere on a table. The shadow of that sphere is going to be darker right here where there's less light hitting where the surface of the sphere is touching the table. As that shadow casts, it starts to delineate. In Maya, we have a control that allows us to, to, to basically tell the light to delineate, which means as it's casting out, it's going to get less. Why? As that shadow moves away from the object, more light is hitting it, 
there, and more reflective light is bouncing back between the surface of the table and the sphere, and then it's making the shadow delineate. In that case, this might not be the best option. This option of me selecting and putting a strong shadow on an object means that the shadow from here to here is the same. But that's not going to be the case necessarily when you're working on another piece, okay? I, I mean, when you're working on a piece and the light is different. If the light source is a little bit lower, the, shadows, the shadow is going to delineate and go from dark to light. So let me show you how to do that. I can hit cancel, right? See how I selected that piece? If I hit control H, my ants are still there, right? I'm gonna hit copy and paste. What I did is I just pasted this, this little section on the layer above. Now I can go to levels and then watch what I can do. I can darken that, right, like so. But now that it's darkened in here, it's on a separate layer. I just copied and pasted what was there, separate layer, adjusted the levels. Now I could come in here with my eraser, okay, or a soft edge eraser like this, the soft right there. And I can drop my eraser down to like 10%. And now again, shadow edges depend on the light source, right? Bright time of day. Early morning, when the sun goes down, we tend to have hard edge shadows. Let's say this is midday. I might want to soften that shadow. It just depends on where you are in the world and the light, especially your relationship to the equator and how the light's coming in. But let's say I want to soften that edge. I drop my eraser down. I'm at 10%. Let me go to 5. Now I'm going to come in here like this, and I'm going to lightly start to erase. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a very light gradient on my shadow. So let me just... Go, I'm going to jump back up to about 10% here. So I don't know if you can see it, but I'm lightly erasing, creating a natural gradation to happen inside my shadow. It's going to make that shadow feel much more realistic as it's casting. Again, shadows are dictated by, in perspective, by the intensity of light. There, do you see how I'm fading that shadow into the surface structure now? Okay. See, it's much, it's much lighter there. Maybe that's what I don't want to do. Maybe it, I've done too much there. In that case, I can hit Control-Z. I can go back a couple steps, take away some of the erase. I can only do a little bit. But if that's not what I wanted, that's fine. Watch, I can delete the layer. I still have the paste memory of what I pasted. If I Control-Paste again, there's that section that I Control and paste it. I could come in here and drop it right where I want it to be. And then I can go to levels, and I could adjust, darken that up again, like so. And then I could come in, and I could start to erase it again. So if I did it too much that time, let me go to erase it like 10% here. I'm just going to lightly hit here a couple times, and hit that edge a couple times, and then hit this edge down here a couple times, just like that. And then I might say, that's it. Leave it alone. Walk away. There, I have a shadow. And the difference is, let me show you now. Look at the value here of that shadow, and then look at the value here. It's lighter. Why? Because I've erased with my eraser at 10%. Numerous times I took off and lightened up this little edge right here. So that would be sort of my next phase, is now I would come in here and I would start to work on shadows and my, my light source on my images to make them all sort of match. Here's one area, look, if I have light coming down this way, I'm going to have a shadow that casts along these rocks here. So let me show you how I would adjust that. I would literally come in here and I would, I, two ways, I could adjust it levels real quick or copy and paste, right? Look at this, I'm going to have a shadow off of this wall on these rocks, which means the, the wall... The wall is going to cast this way, and then some of these rocks are going to be lighter. Okay, Shadows are a really, really important part to indicate form, form analysis, and indication of where the light's coming from. So watch. If I come in here really quick. Hold on a minute. Let me adjust that. Copy and paste of that. Add a little dark edge in there. That was annoying me. Let me go back to my eraser. There we go. I didn't want to get that to blend in real fast. Okay, so now let's talk about right there. What I'm going to do is go to my main layer. I'm going to select. I'm just going to do this super quick right now. I'm going to go over the typology of the rocks because that's how the shadow is going to cast, right? So I'm going to select like this. Looking at the rocks that are here, 
there I'm going to select this area right in here like that okay I'm going to just copy and paste it real quick and then I'm going to go to levels and watch how I create a shadow there just instantaneously okay I'm just going to lighten it right now and if I lighten it up a little bit I can make it look like the, the shadow is casting on part of this. Now I don't like the way that transitioned there because it really lightened it up too much so what I might do instead is select part of this here through here and then I can darken some of that to make it look like there let me just see if I can do it real quick for you like there's a shadow casting from that wall on top. I didn't want to go lighter so now I'm going to go darker. I'm just doing this real quick with the mouse Oops, let me get that little area off. And let's get that area off. There. And now what I can do, let's go to Control H to hide. Let's go to levels, and I can just darken it a little bit. See this? Oops, hold on a minute. There we go. Levels. There we go. And I could get a little bit more of a shadow coming off that wall. And I could, I'd have to mess with it and adjust it. I did a really quick adjustment here where I missed part of the rocks and stuff. But you get the point. I would come in here and then erase some of this. And see, it makes this area pop. And then I have a little bit of shadow casting through there. And I would adjust it accordingly from there. Okay? All right. So, just, uh, oops. Deleted the wrong layer there. So just to recap real quick what we we're covering in this so I could get this rendered out. We talked about darkening the foreground, putting a little bit of a blue value or a gradient on top of it to get the foreground to sort of unite, become sort of one color, and then you could pick and determine where the shadows are. And then we, we talked about retouching your photo, taking out little areas and blending little corners together. Okay. The third thing we talked about was sampling part of the light that's existing in the background and bringing, bringing that highlight structure into part of your image so it starts to make the whole photo come together and the last thing this is something I did in the last class is look I put this backdrop of rocks in here I wanted to adjust these rocks and make them look like they're swaying in this way um, I did not only lighten that image but then I put a little bit of a blur on it to make it drop into the background and I still want to go um, and lighten it up just a little bit more and I did that really quick and I still want to mess around with this backdrop right here of the rocks, okay? So if I come in here and just sort of, part of me wants to just say, lighten a little bit more. Let's see how the level I could take it to, okay? Hold on a second, let's try that again. There you go. Part of me wants to just lighten it a teeny bit more and blend it in, lose some of the detail that's in there, and so on, okay? So those are the little adjustments you do. This is like the finishing touches on your image that you need to put forth, okay? All right, I'm going to wrap it up and end it right there, and let's get this rendered.